James Ernest of the Gruen Truth here with GM of the Lakeland Magic, Anthony Parker. Anthony, how do you all go from being the Erie Bayhawks to the Lakeland Magic? Well, fortunately for us, we were able to to move our, our team a little bit closer to our, our parent organization uh, down here in Lakeland, Florida. And, you know, obviously it's the growing trend around the league to, you know, the, to take full advantage of your your uh, developmental team, you know, they obviously have to be a little closer, and, and it just logistically works better for getting your players back and forth and getting them practices and games, but also being able to main con- maintain contact with uh, the parent roster. So, fortunate enough, exciting for the first year, and uh, we've gotten great feedback from the community so far. Excellent. So, would you consider yourself an expansion team or a relocated team? But we're more relocated. Uh, you know, we were able to retain all of our returning rights players, which is the main difference. Uh, a lot of the expansion, the new expansion teams this year had to participate in the expansion draft and, and kind of um, acquire uh, others' returning rights players that way, and we were able to, to maintain. So that, that's the biggest difference between us and the expansion teams. Nice, yeah, because I noticed that, that uh, heck, you even got uh, uh, one or two players taken off the roster because of that. Yes, yes. So everybody kind of had to uh, determine who their returning rights players were, and, and you couldn't cover everybody. So uh, in order for the, the expansion teams to be able to acquire some returning rights, you had to cover, you know, your nine guys, and then whoever was left out, you know, was left open to the expansion draft. Since you're down in Florida, closer to home, uh, what other places in Florida did you consider? I believe there were some places in and around uh, Disney and, and Jacksonville that were uh, that were considered, but in the end, you know, Lakeland just made the most sense, and you know, it's it's a great community. They have a lot of basketball talent that comes from that area, and, and a lot of the people have been or are you know season ticket holders for the Orlando Magic since inception. So, you know, they've re- <laughs> the co- the community has come out at a lot of different functions and really expressed their excitement to have a G League team, you know, right close to home and, and are excited to, for the season to come. Excellent. Um, tell us about the RP Funding Center and why it's such a uh, attribute for the team. Well, it's a great, great venue for, for uh, minor league basketball. Uh, I think the seating is around 5,000. Um, it's, it's where they've held a lot of the state tournaments here in Florida. And they've gone uh, under, a, I believe it's like a $14 million renovation uh, process and they've uh, gotten all new locker rooms and renovated the area. It looks really, really nice and we're, we're excited. We just uh, had the floor unveiling uh, about a week, two weeks ago and just, you know, the community came out and they had some events where people were able to get on the floor and take pictures and it was a really big event and, and we're just excited that uh, that we're able to, to have our home floor kind of be in the RP Funding Center and put the floor to opening night. Excellent. Was that that uh, big event on October 7th? I believe it was, yes. Nice. I believe it was. Yeah, and I remember Coach was uh, really looking forward to it. He he talked uh, very highly of it and, of course, the organization. Oh, yeah, yeah. We've, we've gotten to tour it, and, and back when we toured it, there was still some work to do. Uh, but you know how these things are with the deadlines, and, and everybody pitched in and worked hard, and, and we got everything ready and, and on schedule for, for opening night. So, you know, we're, we're really excited about it. Um, you know, every, we're gonna we're gonna have something for everybody. The families they come out. If there's kids, there's gonna be activities uh, available for the kids to do. Um, and and you know, one thing about the Orlando Magic organization, they put on a great entertaining experience, and we anticipate that that'll be the same uh, here in Lakeland. Excellent. And then, uh, of course, you have uh, other great facilities uh, for your players. I hear uh, you know, Winter Haven is just amazing. Yeah, it's it's really nice. We're uh, we're going to be practicing at Polk State College, and, and they've been gracious enough to, to open up their facilities with us and, and share and, and weight rooms and everything like that. So, really excited uh, about practicing there. And, and the players will be living in the Winter Haven area, and we found really nice locations for them. Uh, they should be really happy. I, I have to tell you, years ago, I played in the CBA, and my accommodations were a lot less. Uh, <laughs> a lot less uh, nice than, than the ones that, that the players are getting now. So we're excited about it. We're excited to offer these facilities. And obviously in Lakeland, the weather, um, you know, you can't beat it. And um, I think the players are really going to enjoy the experience. 
how uh, big and how uh, how dramatically did the organization change on August eighth? What were you referring to? I'm sorry. When, when you two were announced as the when the change happened, uh, when you two were announced as uh, GM and uh, head oh, that was, <laughs> that was the official date. Oh, okay, I guess you. you're you're better with the dates than I am. Well, I I, I don't know that anything uh, that that has to be that has yet to be determined as far as the the, the direction and everything like that. I can tell you from from my standpoint and Coach Heath's standpoint, we're very very excited to be a part of the Lakeland Magic. Very very excited to be working together. Um, Coincidentally, he and I kind of knew each other a little bit beforehand. Um, we used to go to the same barber shop, and so we'd see each other in there. And of course, I knew of him uh, even before that when he was coaching uh, at the University of South Florida. And just everybody that you talk to just talks about what what a what a wonderful person he is, and, and what a great job he did at South Florida. And you know, I, I think you can see that from the the feedback that you get from the people in in Lakeland, but just around the area. I mean, he's he's just been a great coach and a great influence on all of his young players. And, um, you know, as far as being part of the Lakeland Magic, I get to work with wonderful people on on the business side. Our our team president, Shelly Wilkes, has done an amazing job. Her and her team have done an amazing job of getting things up and running from, you know, you know, starting from scratch is really hard. It's hard work. And, you know, they've done a, a great job of organizing events, getting the word out about our team, um, getting things in, in place for, for our, uh, our fans and, and our players and our staff. And, you know, I just can't say enough about how, how much her and her staff, the hard work they've put in, how great they've done up to this point so far. You mentioned uh, some of the other leagues that you played in and how the accommodations weren't as nice as uh, the new G League and with the Lakeland Magic in it. Um, tell us about how the rebranding has really helped uh, the league. You feel? Well, it's 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 just professional. You know, you feel like you don't feel like it's a minor league from from the uniforms to the floors. You know, I've, I've played overseas. I've played in minor leagues, and you know, some some of these some of these leagues, you get the feeling that it's a minor league when, when you kind of step in the facility or when you you know put on the uniform or whatever. And it just, I think that all of these teams really investing in, in the league and investing in their uh, in their developmental teams is just, uh, you know, giving a lot more players an opportunity, number one, to stay closer to home and maybe not take a, an overseas job that they're not excited about that might not be paying, you know, great or they might not get paid at all. And they have the ability to stay closer to home, play at high, high-level competition, uh, continue to get better as players, and, and do it, you know, hopefully in, in front of uh, family and friends. So, you know, it's just a win all around. And, and from, from our standpoint, as, as the Orlando Magic, you know, we get to, we get to develop players that, that, we've, that we believe in, that have the talent to potentially play in the NBA. And I think one of the things is, you know, the, the lower part of the players that are kind of hanging on to stay in the NBA and the players that are just outside the NBA, the talent gap is, is minuscule. And so sometimes it just comes down to opportunity. And, these players being allowed to stay here and, and stay under our wing and even participate in summer league. A lot of our players that we have on our roster are on our summer league team. So, you know, those types of things, um, you know, allow players to continue to develop and, and, and when the opportunity presents itself, you know, they're in a position to, to take advantage of it. Yeah, that is the nice thing about the league. I mean, uh, you mentioned about opportunities. Um, the Orlando Magic have that uh, the young man from the uh, the Spurs developmental team that's now on their uh, their main roster. Uh, how do you feel that uh, those opportunities are better now than they had been in the past? Well, I, I think that there's just more avenues. Uh, you know, years ago, it, it felt like when you went overseas, that was it. You were gone for good. Um, and, you know, staying in the minor league, there, there was, you know, call-ups. And, you know, if you didn't get called up, you know, that was it. And that was kind of your opportunity. And I think now just with organizations kind of being able to have a minor league team, kind of uh, it, it allows teams to pick out guys that, you know, they feel like have a chance and, and be with them for a long time and get their hands on them, get to know them, work out with them. Um, you know, through the minor league staff and, and make determinations. Uh, a lot of times you had to, before it felt like you had to make those determinations kind of from afar. And so, you know, from, from the player standpoint, they feel like they're part of an organization. You're under the umbrella of the Orlando Magic. You're under the umbrella of whatever NBA team when you're on that minor league team or, or summer league. 
And, you know, I, I just think that that wasn't the case before. Um, so just more of the opportunities. And even now when you go overseas, it's not a situation where you feel like you're kind of on the other side of the world. You know, we, we know that the world is a lot smaller now and, and the NBA is a lot more international. Uh, there's a lot more international flavor on, on each roster. So, you know, you know, we, we have eyes all around the world. And, and um, you know, I, I just feel as a player right now, you have a lot more avenues and opportunities to try to try to make it into the NBA or make a good living, uh, you know, playing basketball outside of the NBA. With your uh, franchise's philosophy, what type of things do you look for in your coaches and your players? Well, number one, and I, I believe this and we all hear it, it's about relationships. And, and I think that more than ever, you have to be a people person. You have to be somebody that values relationships and, and not just someone that checks the box and, you know, says, hey, you know, we went to dinner or whatever. But, yeah, I think players and, and people in general can really t- tell when someone has a genuine interest in you. And, and I think that that makes the relationship differently. I, I don't think that, you know, service relationship, if I ask you to do something or if I get on you about something, if I don't think you have my interest at heart, then I'm going to react a certain way. But if I know that you have my, my best interest at heart and, and you really care about me and you show me that and, you know, through our relationship there's been opportunities to, to demonstrate that, then I'll react in, in a more positive way and, and I'm more apt to kind of do something that maybe I otherwise wouldn't want to do. Um, and I think that's how breakthroughs happen. And so, you know, to me that's the most important thing uh, when, when you bring coaching staffs on is that they have a passion for the game, that they love what they do, and they they love people, and and not just the people that <laughs> that everybody loves, but maybe the people that uh, are, are a little bit harder to get get along with, or a little bit harder to, to to reach. And and I think that's kind of what we looked for when we were trying to put our staff together. Excellent. Um, tell us about uh, the open tryouts and uh, and how successful those were for the uh, for the Magic. Yeah, we had the open tryouts uh, last month. And, and we had a great turnout. We tried to cap it at, at 100 people, but ended up going to like 150 or more. Um, and, you know, when people, you just don't want to turn people away when they come to the door. And, and you know, this, this is their shot. And I, I have to say all of the players really tried to play the right way, really worked hard, um, really tried to listen and, and, and take the instruction and, and do it on the court. And so, you know, the, the tough part about this business is, is turning people away that, that do all the right things. And, you know, that's the tough part, and that's probably the part of it I'll, I'll never get used to. But at the same time, you know, we really had a, an amazing turnout. And, you know, the, the community really <laughs> has, has a lot of talent, actually, in the community. And um, so it was really good to see that and be a part of it. So tell us about uh, your two-way players and the impact they have on – on your team and on the Magic's uh, franchise in general. Yes, yeah, so our our two way players. We just recently signed Jamel Artis, and so he'll he'll be joining us this year. We're very excited about that. He's a, a versatile player from Pittsburgh, and you know I, I I like him because he has the size, the athleticism, and the skill level to do a little bit of everything. And uh, I think the sky's the limit with him. And you know he, he's an example of of a guy that I think just needs an opportunity and so you know we're, we're excited to give that to him uh our, our second two-way player adrian Payne, who a lot of you might know from michigan state and has bounced around the, the nba and and um we we're fortunate enough to to be able to sign him talented talented uh big who can play at either position uh can step outside and score can can go inside and score just love his versatility and um his ability to rebound and put the ball in the basket and he just knows how to play it and has some toughness. You know, you can't play for Coach Izzo and come away and not not have some toughness. And, and he certainly has that Spartan toughness. And you know, he and Coach Heath have that Michigan State background in, in common. So, so that was just a marriage, and a, and, a, and a, you know, just made sense from the beginning. Excellent. So, what players do you feel are going to step up and, and be leaders this year for your organization? Well, you know what? I, I think I have kind of some names who I, I hope. Uh, take on a leadership role and, and step up and, and and be our leaders on the team. But, but I want to leave that open. I don't want to uh, – I don't think it's fair to some other players that might be able to do that as well to kind of name names and say, hey, you know, I'm expected this of this guy and by not saying their name, not expecting it of them. So I, I'm really excited 
once training camp starts to see who kind of takes that lead role and, and see who, um, you know, there's always, there's always a couple players that the players around them have to adjust to their level of intensity, the, their, their level of professionalism and, and their level of passion. And, and I'm always fascinated to see who kind of sets the tone and, and then who has to adjust. And so I'm, I'm uh, excited to see that when we start training camp next week. Yeah, I'm excited about uh, T.J. Price, uh, just how he played the game the right way at Western Kentucky and then just, uh, you know, seeing him take the next steps. Uh, do you feel he's uh, got the ability to uh, take the ne- take it to the next level? No question. T.J. is a, a combo guard with, with great size, good athleticism. Um, he, he plays the right way, like you mentioned. He, he does all the things. He's not afraid to get his nose dirty, dirty and mix it up. He's a versatile defender, um, and, and I think he can he can do some things off off the ball and on the ball on the offensive end as well. So he's he's kind of our utility player that you know whenever wherever there's a hole we, we can just put TJ there and, and he'll plug it up. And I think every roster needs a player like that. So let's see. He's a combo guard. He plays the game the right way. He's uh, very professional. That that guy sounds familiar. Uh, does he sound any, like anybody you know? No, not at all. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I was going to say, actually, I think that is the literal definition of you, you know, playing the game the right way and uh, very versatile and just, yeah, that is awesome. That, I appreciate that. Uh, welcome. So, uh, you know, she, like I said, we're glad to have you on the show and learn more about the uh, the Lakeland Magic. And uh, definitely I was excited to hear that, uh, that you got the uh, position because uh, nowadays they need more people that uh, know how to play the game the right way. Well, thank you, thank you. And I think that now more than ever, you know, the NBA went through that stage where it was kind of ISO back down basketball, and, and the defensive had, defensive uh, strategies have have adjusted to the point where you know it demands that you move the ball, play the game the right way, and, and, and be a skilled player. And so, you know, I think that's kind of what we're looking for. And, and honestly, it's the most fun way to play. <laughs> you know, I, there's, there's a certain amount of energy in the ball with that where everybody touches it. Things like the big guys run the floor harder, they rebound harder, uh, the guards are a little bit more um, willing to, to give up the ball and, and share and, and make players around them better. And it's just, uh, for the fans, an overall better brand of basketball to watch. So I'm excited to where the game's going, and, and I'm excited with the type of players that we're, we as evaluators are starting to put a, a premium on. Exactly. It's about playing the team game as opposed to, like you said, that ISO ball stuff was was getting old quickly. Uh, just, you know, one or two players focusing on the ball where the other players kind of felt like either on offense or defense they were checking out. And, yeah, just getting back to the uh, the basics, the traditional basketball is a, a great way. So if the fans are wanting to learn more about the Lakeland Magic, um, social media, of course, your main website, that kind of thing, what uh, what would you recommend? Well, we have a uh, presence on Instagram, uh, Lakeland Magic. We, we have an Instagram uh, account. We have a Twitter account, uh, Lakeland Magic Twitter account. And you can always go on the website. But the best way to learn about the Lakeland Magic is to come out to RP Funding on November 10th for our season opener. And, and I think that uh, we're going to play a style of basketball. We're going to have a brand of entertainment that, uh, that most people, all people, if they come in the gym, if they come in the arena, they're going to enjoy and they're going to want to come back for more. So I'm excited about it. I know our coaching staff is on the business side. Uh, Shelly Wilkes and her team have put a lot of work into it and, and are very excited about it. And, and our players are going to going to report next week, and, and we're going to start getting ready for, for a wonderful season, we hope. Excellent. I would like to thank our guest today, Anthony Parker, GM of the uh, Lakeland Magic. Thank you for coming on the show, and we definitely uh, look forward to following up with you in the future. Thanks for having me, James. I appreciate it.